Hello again everyone and welcome back to Coffee Break Archaeology. Now today I will be having a go at my uh, very own and first Let's Play. Um, I thought, you know, why not give it a go? I was browsing through Steam and I found a game which is called C14 Dating. Now it's not actually a uh, game about carbon dating, but it is a dating simulator that combines archaeology, friendship and love. You play as Melissa Flores, a third year anthropology student, so this is taking place in America, participating in a summer archaeological internship. The field school takes place in Belgium, over 5,000 miles away from your native California. Okay, it's a little bit out of your comfort zone, and the fact that you'll be staying with an unfamiliar country for two months can be nerve-wracking, but you couldn't pass up such a learning opportunity. You get to excavate at an authentic prehistoric site which has uncovered Neanderthal remains in the past. Maybe you'll dig up some bones or even unearth some tools that were manufactured by early humans. And of course, you might forge friendships and find romance during your stay. So the key game features listed here are play as Melissa, anthropology student abroad on a summer internship, romance DeAndre, Hendrik, Kyla and Shoji, dating sim gameplay with optional archaeological minigames, beautiful manga artwork and original soundtrack and a different cast with some very unique characters. So, um, this is a Atomi game, and for all of you those who don't know what an Atomi game is, an Atomi game, or Atomi Gemu, literally meaning maiden game, sometimes contracted to Otorge, is a story-based video game that is targeted generally towards women. But, you know. Generally, one of the goals, besides the main plot goal, is to develop a romantic relationship between the female player character and one of several male characters. This genre is most established in Japan and is mostly made up of visual novels and simulation games, particularly dating sims and life simulation games. So there we go. If you want to find out more, then do check out the Wikipedia article. Uh, but back to the actual game itself. I just like to point out I'm doing this purely to for my own fun benefit, not being not no incentives by Winter Wolves, the developers. I just kind of uh, want to give Let's Play in a go and uh, see if I can find some other archaeology games that I could also use to uh, do Let's Plays. Sort of want to do the original Tomb Raider at some point, but that's off, slightly off topic for now. Um, so again, mainly positive reviews on Steam. Costs £15, probably a, a bit more than I would spend on a dating simulator. Before we start, the most important ingredient for this Let's Play is a nice beer. Won't be archaeology without it. Okay, let's get started. I did do a bit of a playthrough before, and a little test. The test test play I did was absolute garbage, so we're just going to ignore that and pretend it didn't happen. And we're going to start from the very beginning. Um, there is no voice acting in this game, it's mainly music, and the music is a little bit more irritated, so I'll sort of have it quiet on in the background for you to hear a little bit. So I'm going to have to do all the voices as well, which is terrible because I'm not a voice actor, and I can't do accents. So I do apologise if I offend anyone with my voices, it's not intentional, I'm just really, really bad. Okay, let's get going. Let's start the game. Would you like to turn off a minigame? So a big part of this is you can just do the dating simulator and you don't have to do the archaeology minigames which are part of it but being this is an archaeology channel of course we're going to do archaeology minigames and see how badly I suck at doing them. So we can leave the minigames on. And you know, for some reason next bit it asks you about original font or alternative font and dialogue. I don't know what the other ones are, that might actually be slightly easier to read. Like that, so let's start the game. Ah, is this it? I glanced at the map, which highlighted the road names along the star next to my destination. After comparing, I came to the conclusion this wasn't the right place, but I was close. <sighs> Building up suspense early on, aren't they? 
The village colonnade was clustered by the Muse River, and I paused to admire the pretty gardens surrounding the houses. <laughs> pretty gardens? Really? Wall, some grass, some small bushes. Quite nice houses, actually. Nice timber frame construction. I like. And what appears to be a barn there, or might be a house. It was odd. I was oddly calm, despite being over 5,000 miles from California's home. The reality of being in another country had yet to sink in. Up ahead, there was a clearing separated from the road by a fence. On the other side, a few tents were stationed behind a two story building. I spotted an open chained gate with a billboard in front of the driveway. It said, Grotte de Calen on Tree. That's the place. I don't know what voice I'm going to do from Melissa yet. I'll play. A familiar figure stood by the entrance. She was currently talking to a middle aged man, but when she saw me, she gave me a cheerful wave as I ran up to her. Sherry! With one hand on my bag, I exchanged a half embrace with my professor. What's a half embrace? Are we embracing it or not, surely? Sort of one arm hug, maybe? I don't know. I didn't know you'd already arrived. If you called me, I would have come and picked you up from the train station. Again, I don't know what voice I'm going to do for Sherry. <laughs> you mentioned that the cave wasn't far, so I wanted to soak in the scenery and enjoy the sights. I'm glad you made it safely. Was it difficult to take a train? Nope. Well, I did try to practice my French, but at the ticket station, until the person said that he could speak English, he pointed me in the right direction. I'm kind of deliberately speaking fast from this, sir, because I kind of think that's a kind of anticipation. I also naturally speak fast. It's just an excuse, really. At least you'll be able to brush up on your French. You'll find it's not too different from Spanish. You'll catch on quickly. Oh, I groaned inertly. My Spanish wasn't the most fluent, but I mentioned it in my interview when discussing how I'd cope with staying in Belgium without knowing French. I glanced around and then turned to Sherry. Where's Paige? Did she say she'd be arriving earlier today? Or was that tomorrow? I got an email from her yesterday saying that it'd be a family emergency. She won't be able to participate this summer. I failed to hide my disappointment. But Paige was the other student from my university who had planned to attend the field school. We even worked out trips to do every weekend during our stay. I mustered up a weak smile. It's understandable. Can't be helped if it's family. Then it would just be me. Sherry gestured to the other person present to change the subject. But before I forget, let me introduce Professor Augustin Dupont, Chief Archaeologist of Caden Cave. I eagerly extended my arm for a handshake. Everything I heard about Mr. Dupont. Dupont, Dupont, Dupont. From Sherry. And she mentioned that he was a revered Belgian archaeologist. It's an honour to meet you. I'm Melissa Flores, a junior. I look forward to seeing Chevy's student every summer. It is a pleasure to meet you. I told you I wasn't very good at accents. Mr. Dupont with a heavy French accent, or whatever accent I just did, but had no problem comprehending him. Have you gone over everything with Chevy? The, the students from the year he survived tonight, they will get their first lecture before dinner. I got all the information I need to know about French X sense from LOLO. Yes, I'll still attend the lecture though. If I was going to be submerged in the language, I might as well start by hanging out with the local students. Mr. Dupont eyed my suitcase. It must have been a tiring trip. Come, we will show you around. We're back. The students will be spending the weekdays. We reached the clearing and I spotted the set same tents, most clustered around the perimeter against the bushes and a few were close to the building. Now looking at these tents it does very much remind me of my first experience with an archaeological dig with lots of people very suitable tents. I did not have a nice suitable tent though, I had an ex-scout patrol tent which was fantastic.
fantastic tent to use because you could actually stand up and when spending six to eight weeks on the dig being able to stand up and change while standing up was useful feel free to pick one these are for the students who don't own their own tents or air mattress and couldn't bring one or couldn't bring one the chief archaeologist archaeologist gave a nod and then he excused himself he probably had other matters to attend to before the students survived I studied the tents next to the building and thought about my phone, which was still in aeroplane mode. How's the Wi-Fi here? Bloody millennials. If you stay in a tent, you might get Wi-Fi. It doesn't extend much here in the back. Sorry for me. If you bought a laptop, you can leave it in the laboratory. It's been done before. Everything gets locked up at night, though, for safekeeping. Fair enough. At least I can keep in touch with my parents. Once you're finished, come back to the front, and we'll give you the tour. We get to see the cave today. It's already been knocked up, so you'll have to wait till tomorrow. Some to the morning. And the anticipation builds. Anticipation, anticipation. Sorry, I've, I've honestly only had, well, two beers. One to pluck up the courage to do this, and one for whilst I do it. Um, but I'm also quite tired. It's been quite a long day, and I'm recording this at. 10 o'clock at night. <clears throat> I fed her and started unpacking. There was already a mattress, pillow and sleeping bag in place and it only took a few moments to settle in. Done! Grabbing a small storage bag, I zip my tent up and hide over to the front of the building. The all diggers. What have I done? Let's go back. There we go. I accidentally clipped on a button. Sorry, I'm just going to have to blow my nose. Anyway, this is the main entrance. This will take you to... Dun dun dun! She opened a door and my eyes widened when I saw display after display. So it was a museum. Now, the point of the museum hasn't been mentioned up to this point. I assume maybe in an early version of the game she may have speculated about a museum when walking towards the site, but she only mentioned a two-story building. At no point did she indicate that it might be a museum, but there we go. Just nitpicking. And a remarkably tiny one. After one yoop, I was already back to the entrance and I wanted to examine the displays more, but I figured out I'd have some free time later. Now just looking around this museum, for starters, what's this? That looks like no Adam Wine though, especially well, I don't know. You know, it's manga. <laughs> Do appear to have some pots and some coins, maybe? I don't know. Probably not coins, because they said it extended 4,000 years, so they kind of look like they might be coins. Some more sort of pottery. Um, that looks like a bell. Goodness knows what those are supposed to be, figurines or something. And those look like whale bones, but I'm guessing they're probably flint tools or bone tools of some kind. And this... Display case in the middle. What? Well, for starters, what's in it? What's that? What's that? That could be some tools again. Um, goodness knows what that's supposed to be. But how is it supported? It appears just to be floating in the air. I'm guessing that the box here is hiding something. But if you just travel down the box and you notice here, there's nothing down here. So unless it's going straight down, what's that supported on? There we go. Shiri and I ascended the stairs by the entrance. Well, if they're talking about, you know, is this... Is that the outside of the building? Because there's certainly no stairs here. Or is the entrance behind us? There's no stairs there. Or are the stairs on the outside? I don't know. Again, nitpicking. This room is more of a multi-purpose room. It can be used for lectures and where... And it, it's where findings are cleaned if the that outside isn't suitable. One with ten. I cleared the storage bag, wondering how to bring up the question. Fortunately, Chevy noticed something important in there. Um, the extra insulin. I won't be using it yet. It just needs to avoid extreme temperatures. Is there somewhere safe I, I can store it? Oh, of course. Thank you for reminding me. Feel free to use the indoor kitchen since it's restricted to staff members. Augustine has granted you access since he knows you're diabetic. <laughs> now. 
This is quite interesting. The fact that they brought out that she's diabetic. It's like your couch straight. Not that obviously uh, nothing wrong with diabetes at all, but it does seem something odd to bring up so early on. Now, is it going to be important to the story? Is it just a little bit of fleshing out of the character? Who knows? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. She led me to the back, giving me a chance to store the insulin bottles in the fridge. <laughs> and to conclude the tour, this is the lab. This is where most of the research takes place. Now, before we continue the dialogue here, I've never seen a lab which looks that tidy. Never. Not even... No, never. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the lemon hose in. I do apologise. I'm going to be unprofessional. Now, so what do we have in this lab? Well, let's have a look. Got some cases with some artifacts. Ooh, dear goodness, we've gone all back with the frame. Some artifacts, some pottery, potentially a funeral vessel, funerary vessel there, maybe. Maybe a cooking pot. Beads or some form of jewellery. Some rock samples by the looks of it. Maybe some more pottery. That looks like a giant glass bottle of some kind. Some microscopes, some posters with some potentially some soil sediments and diagrams up there, goodness knows what that's supposed to be. A couple of laptops, paperwork, almost mandatory really, another microscope, a jar, and to me that just looks like a coffee machine, which to be fair, not an important thing necessarily to have in the lab obviously for very important lab reasons, but something you need to keep nearby, but I have no idea what that's actually supposed to be. It could be sort of like a sample case for keeping the cut samples, I don't know. And a lot of cupboards. <laughs> so how many students will be in here? It varies. It can be as many as 40 or as few as 20. Students from the age are required to devote at least four weeks working at an archaeological site, regardless of their major. Therefore, we may get a lot of music and art students too. The other students should be arriving soon. How's the jet lag? Not bad so far. A little fatigued, but nothing else. I'm going to be up all night, aren't I? Worst case scenario, I'll give you an extra day to prepare yourself for the dig. <laughs> you have a reviewed material I've given you, right? Um, yes, I've looked at it. Is there anything else you would like to go over? It has been a month since my last lecture. Okay, so let's do a little bit of inquiry, shall we? Let's inquire about Kingdom Cave. Can you remind me about the site again? I know it's famous for discovering the remains of a Neanderthal dating back 125,000 years. Now, this is going to be touched on a little bit later, but they are choosing the Neanderthal spelling variant without the H, which I personally absolutely hate. So even though it says it on the screen as Neanderthal, I'll be pronouncing it Neanderthal, even though both are technically correct. And she kind of does give her reasons later on for why she calls it what she does. So there we go. We'll move on. Correct, the site has been was a, the site has established two Neanderthal Neanderthal occupations in different times. This is mainly a middle Paleolithic site with sediments ranging from three hundred thousand years ago to as recent as four thousand years ago. I don't know why I said it like that. Nice, I can't wait to discover a tooth or something. <laughs> If you do, it will likely belong to a cave bear. Cave bear? Those remains found often? Yes, 99% of all faunal animal remains collected are cave bear. Even so, I'm sure that's something not many people can say that they've dug up a cave bear. I certainly haven't. So how long have you been digging here? How long have you been digging here? Or how long have you been part of the team? Me? Hmm, I started working with Augustine about ten years ago. We go way back. <laughs> That's how I established the Caelan Cave Internship. Our university has developed a reputation for bringing over exceptional students. And it's just me this year? I hope I'm going to be able to live up to expectations. I'm sure you'll do fine. See about that. Let's go over to itinerary. What's the schedule exactly? How long does the dug dig go on? Go till. <clears throat> it's going on until the end of August, and you'll be leaving at the end of next month, was it? 
Right, on a Saturday, I know only four weeks are required for the field school, but I thought I would learn more if I stayed for eight. It's a mistake I made on my first dig, actually. I didn't stay for full time. Dates aside, breakfast is served in the morning at 7.30. Cave and lab activities go on from 8 till noon, and then there's an hour for lunch. Activities resume from 1 till 5. Sounds very similar to the um, dig I went to, actually. If anyone was old, and it was at Silchester in Hampshire. Dinner starts at 7. On the weekends, both students and the excavation team leave for home. The cave and museum are locked up during this time. Now, that is different. Now, you see, when I was digging, we didn't get a full weekend. In fact, actually, we were digging during the weekend, but the only day we got off was Friday. Although, not many people worked on, on Sunday particularly hard, to be honest. <laughs> the back of the building will, will be accessible to you, of course. And if you prefer, you can always sleep on the second floor if you don't like the idea of sleeping outside alone. Again, I'm sorry it's just you. I, I usually get more students than this. I'll be okay on my own, promise. Uh, so let's go over the grading system. Ooh, grading system. I'd like to go over the grading system one more time. Did you bring your journal? I sure did. Essentially, I'll be grading on you on your performances both in the cave and working in the lab, and I'd like you to record your findings and experiences in a journal. Now, it is actually also something I'd do when I was on dig. I had to receive a journal, a uh, record on a journal. I expect it to be turned in every Friday evening, and I'll get it back to you the phone Monday. Now, this was something I was not expected to do. However, we were expected to write up a report based on our journals at the end of the dig when I uh, trained. If you're sick, you are allowed to miss some days. I won't deduct marks for that. However, there is no excuse for playing truant. Remember kids, stay in school. Don't forget to take breaks often whilst you excavate in the cave. There's a risk of getting hypoxia due to less oxygen. I'm not just marking you in academics, I'll also be seeing how often you volunteer. <laughs> volunteer? Yes, students use the outdoor kitchen and are in charge of preparing meals along with the cleanup that follows. Now again, also something I was very used to on my digs, um, helping prepare meals, clean up after meals, do the washing out, and also clean the portal loose. Now that was something that uh, no one really looked forward to, especially after Friday night. I don't expect you to volunteer all the time, since that does cut into your excavation lab time, but once in a while, it's ideal. <laughs> Define a while. We find out more about this Augustine. Maybe is there something going on between them? Do you reckon? After wait and see, is Augustine easy to get along with? He seems friendly. He is for the most part, but he's like an overprotective father when it comes to the cave. He's been supervising it for over two decades and is the leading expert. It's his baby. It's a little creepy. Just a little bit. I'll be helping you, of course, and as far as I'm concerned, you're my student, not his. Any problems that come up, I'll discuss with, it, with you personally. I meekly nodded. Although now I was worried about making a mistake. After all, this was all new to me. Neanderthal or Neanderthal. Yeah, so here we go. I noticed that in all your lectures, you, you, you use Neanderthal. I've always heard it, though, as Neanderthal. Is it a preference? A preference, and there's no H sound when it comes, when it's pronounced in French and German. It's something that I pick up, that I picked up when I started working in Europe. However, both are accepted spellings in academic journals. Here, it will be referred to as Neanderthal. Apart from it, won't. I was doing that for emphasis. I will be referring it to it as Neanderthal. Right, Neanderthal. It is. That's all, folk. That's all, folks. I think I'm good for now. Great. However, if there are any new questions that come up, feel free to ask. I have a question. What is going on with your hair? It's all over the place. We heard activity outside, complete with loud voices and footsteps on the gravel. 
It sounds like other students from Liège are here. Augustine will start for lectures soon. Huh? No chance to unpack or get ready or anything like that? No, all the students were given instructions on when to arrive. Punctuality is valued greatly here. It will lecture now and the students will settle in after. <laughs> I'll be on my way. Some students stood whilst others sat on the stone tiles in front of the building. A few leaned against their luggage, but they all formed in a circle, semicircle around Augustine. So who do we have here? I assume we'll get to know these individuals at some point. There are about 30 faces and I wondered how the campaign crowns would contain them all. They all fell silent when August Augustine began to speak. <laughs> or I picked up the key words such as Archeologie, Grotte and Sodomont. Most of it was lost to me. He repeated Carquier a lot too. However, his gestures were vibrant and I sensed a passion behind his voice. It got me looking forward to excavating tomorrow. So here we have a weekly journal or schedule that we've got to fill in. It doesn't actually tell you that's what you need to do. But there we go. So I think I'll be a good girl and I'll do lots of studying on the Monday. Maybe followed by a bit of studying and inquiring. Now it's interesting actually here, if you click on each one, it shows how it affects your stats. So study increases diligence, but increases stress. Browse the internet. Um, it's one of the few things which actually reduce, or the only thing which really reduces stress. And now that's very interesting because generally the internet is my main form of stress when it comes to things, especially when you see people talking about archaeology and dinosaurs. Remember, folks, we don't do dinosaurs. Uh, sorry, back on track. Uh, so we've got inquire, which increases uh, rationale but also increases stress. Gaming increases empathy. Okay, and uh, also increases stress. Now, I thought actually it would de-stress me unless it's sort of reference into the time it should be spent studying and stuff and that kind of rationale. But there we go. Uh, catch again increases culture. Fair enough. And socialising, which increases culture and empathy, those are quite understandable, and also increases stress. But again, you know, socialising if it's not if it's part of what you're doing, I, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but those are the stats. So these are the kind of things that you're trying to... Obviously, you want to keep the stress as low as possible and eat like, these as high as possible. So on the Wednesday, a bit of study, a bit of inquire, maybe a bit of browse internet, just to try and keep those stress levels down. A uh, bit more study, a bit more study. I think another bit of browse internet. Study, study, socialise. And then you're only given one bar for the weekend. So what do we want to do at the weekend, guys? Maybe explore the museum. That's a little. That's kind of like studying. Uh, explore the town and maybe dance. Should we do that? Let's commit that. Like Sherry said, there was another lecture in the morning, complete with a whiteboard and Augustine demonstrating how to use a trowel. It's weird, my trowel's not here. Where's my trowel gone? I've lost my trowel. Ah, oh no! Where's my trowel? I've recently done tidying and I have no idea, because of that, where the thing is. Ah, I know where it is. Where's one of my trowels? Oh, both of my trowels. I'd just like to introduce you to my trowels. This one's Bob. This one's Trevor. He's the one who features an Archie, an Archie the Archaeologist comic, Trevor the Trowel. Now one might notice that they are probably both a bit too pointed to be a trowel. Um, I did have another one as well, which I lost. Um, so I've only really got these two now. That one was a little bit more. more. It's always heartbreaking when an archaeologist uses a trowel. It's like using your right hand or your left hand or whatever hand you're dominant with. 
or like a really cute puppy. Sorry, that was a weird tangent. <clears throat> so the lecture was all in French, and Sherry was kind enough to translate some of the key phrases or remind me what I covered with her before the trip. The students were divided with one half, me included, to head for the cave, while the other hand, half would stay behind for lab work. <sighs> I was always much better for lab work than I was excavating, just going to point out now. That might be reflected later on in some of the minigames. Walk to the cave was rough. Ten min was roughly ten minutes, passing through a narrow path in the sloped woods. The trickier sections had cement stairs installed along with handles to prevent slipping. When we reached an ordinary-looking shed, Augustine pulled out his keys. I realised that this was the cave entrance, or at least the artificial part of it. Once you're inside, please spread out so I can explain. How to uh, uh, wet screen. I'm gonna stop attempting to do accents, I think. <laughs> he repeated the instructions in French. As we filed through one by one, there was another. There was a raised counter in the middle of the room with plastic containers suspended on wooden supports. So, this is where the wet screening take place. It looks like it can only fit two people at a time. I wonder how often it's used. <laughs> Augustin demonstrated by lowering an empty metal sieve into the plastic container. Grabbing the hose, he mimed washing the screen and rooting through the pretend dirt. Don't know why I'm doing the actions. <laughs> I guess because the actual game itself isn't that particularly visually interesting and I can't do the voices, so I feel like I should do something to try and keep people's attention. Or something I don't know. As much as I tried to pay attention, the language barrier tested my focuses, and my eyes started to wander. <laughs> now, you only get to choose one. I've done the other two already. I've done check out the posters. They're not that particularly interesting. They mainly show techniques and their pictures of other excavations. I've, the look down doesn't really do much, so I'm going to click on stay focused this time. <laughs> I did come here to learn, didn't I? French or not, I should show that I'm serious about this. He's mentioned photographs a lot. Is someone coming to take pictures? Everyone started to line up after Augustine gestured to each item, which ranged from stacks of buckets to plastic containers full of trowels and brushes. I followed and carried everything in my own bucket, including a sheet of paper encased in a plastic bag. <laughs> The real cave entrance, cave opening, leading onto a narrow industrial walk, cat walkway, catwalk suspended over the abyss. Dun dun dun. Now, what the hell is that? That kind of looks like a crab claw. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Once I walked through, the temperature dropped to a cool chill. Oh, I zipped up my hoodie. You I don't know what's going to be the actions. Augustine directed students to various locations while Sherry carefully slipped by and I followed. The cave opened up farther in numerous stalactites and stalagmites everywhere. The catwalk really disappeared where the ladders connected or when it branched off into other segments of the cave. Sherry, where will I dig? Sherry leaned over a rail and pointed to one of the deeper parts. You'll be digging here. It's a 125,000 year old layer, the very same layer in which they discovered a Neanderthal, a, a Neanderthal mandible. What? I'll be digging in such an important place already? Despite my nerves, I felt giddy inside. Shimmy climbed down the ladder and I trailed behind her. At the bottom of the ladder was another catwalk positioned exactly in the middle. <laughs> Now that my eyes adjusted to the dim light, I noticed that there were strings and cords hung everywhere in a specific pattern, with notes nailed into the soil. Shiri brought me to the end of the catwalk, where there was yet another ladder, but this time much shorter. You'll be digging on the right side here. Here was a rather cosy looking pit, perfectly dug out square. Two to three people could probably move around freely in the space. It was almost right under the catwalk higher up. This 
this is your KV D32. KV D42? KV means square. Everything is separated into a grid system. Starting from the entrance of a cave, the uppermost right, it goes A1, B1, and so forth. That makes sense. It explains all the lines dangling from the ceiling, too. But for measuring. Correct. We shall take a close. Shall we take a closer look? The photographs of for this row should be done already. I'll be right back. You can go ahead and set your items down. She retreated while I placed the bucket next to the shorter ladder. I descended, then grabbed the tools before I hopped off the last step. The layer I was to be working on was mostly dirt, with the odd rock sticking out here and there. It would be easy to dig. By this time, show you returned. I already had my knee pads out and the piece of paper next to me. Here we are, a picture of your square, which we don't get to see. She handed it to me. I could tell it was printed off in the highest resolution possible, fully inked and glossy. <laughs> what do we use photograph for? First things first, we distinguish each layer and outline it on the photograph. Once I've gotten on myself, check it over. You can go ahead and start excavating. This picture is irreplaceable reference and you, you'll find yourself relying on it often. Please don't use it or get it tarnished. Sadly, Augustine is short-staffed at the moment and I'll be helping other students since most are new to this too. If there's anything you, is there anything you'd like to go over? Oh, let's go over everything, shall we? Type of excavation. I've always heard about the horizontal digging, but vertical? It was Augustine's idea, stratigraphy for study of rock layers is extremely important and the excavation method ensures that each level is examined in great detail. It's also easier to compare the strata when you can view it as a whole. If you want to know about the cave in general or its stratigraphical approaches, you can ask Hendrik when he arrives. He is a resident, resident geologist and Augustine's nephew. Not playing favouritisms or anything. The details were guarding the document Paper. What is this? I quickly glanced at the first word at the top. Fish thing, exactly. I, I know we've gone over it, over how it's used to record finds, but I flipped it open, seeing the coordinates with a grid zero in the left hand corner and ending in a hundred for both x and y axes. It looks complicated. Ah, that. A little bit of math will come into play. You'll be measuring where you find the remains using both X and Y along with the altitude Z. X runs parallel to the entrance while Y, while y goes from the front to back. Every section is divided into 100 by 100 square centimetres. Oh, less. Forgot that we'll be using the metric system and my mind's going to have fun adjusting to it. The grid helps and you record what you find under this list labelled nature. Each fiche or document has its own number already written along with the year. You'll find the carré number, the layer name and today's date. You'll fill out the carré number, the layer name and today's date. Oh, and write down the photo number on it so there's no mix-ups. And I accidentally clicked on that. Let's go there. Did you get all that? Um, that's a lot to take in, but I think I grasped it. It's easier once you actually start, and I'll be there to help. Remember, one fish per layer. What do you do once you find an artifact or bone? So what do you do once I found a Neanderthal tooth? First, don't pluck it out like some amateur archaeologist. You'll lose the context. Measure it before you remove it. Number it, and then carefully wrap it up in the foil. Remember, kids, context matters. There will be a plastic bag that you can use to store all the findings. How do you number the findings? Just by the order you find it in. One, two, three, jot it down on a piece of paper and stick it in the tin foil as well so it won't get lost. Different sites generally have their own numbering systems. When you finish excavating the entire layer, seal everything found into the plastic bag along with the completed fish. Believe me, you'll be relieved to finally finish a layer. Handling each air. When I excavate vertically, I just focus on one layer at a time, right? That's the ideal approach. However, layers are 
perfect straight lines like they are in the textbook diagrams. They widen, they narrow, they slant, and they disappear completely. If you come to a situation where you have to dig through more than one layer, keep separate features and buckets. Never mix the contents. Indeed not. Because once you fill up a bucket, you'll be wet screening the material. Anything you overlooked the first time, such as bone, will then be deposited in a cup marked with the layer, na layer name. What happens if you find something extremely important, like a Neanderthal skull? Neanderthal skull? Now, if you find a Neanderthal skull whilst wet screening, you probably shouldn't be digging. <laughs> I admit, the image of suddenly pouring out a complete skull out of the screening area was rather comical. Then you better hope Augustin doesn't see it. You'll never want to find flint or burnt bone in your tamassage, which is the French for screening. Keep a careful eye out, and if you find something you're unsure of, ask me or a fair archaeologist. I think I've got it. I'm good, Chevy. Wonderful. I'll give you some time to get familiar with your square. <laughs> if you're struck into them, remember you can adjust the heat lamps, also the photographs contrasts have been altered to help distinguish the sedimentary layers easily. Somehow, I've managed to trip back to this style of writing, never mind, dialogue. I'll be back shortly. Glance on that photograph before comparing it to the vertical wall. No matter how close I looked, everything was brown, brown and more brown. How am I ever supposed to tell the difference between this brown layer from another brown layer? Not deterred, I picked up a pencil and began marking the more distinct sediments. Eventually it became less solid brown and I could see reds and faint yellows within the soil. I was so focused I barely registered that I was not alone anymore. A tall student stood by the square next to mine, already engaged in identifying the sediments. I paid him no heed until I became stumped on whether I was looking at one layer or two. Quietly peering at his profile, he seemed rather familiar with the system. I'm guessing it wouldn't hurt to ask him, or at least try to communicate. Um, can I get your opinion on something? <laughs> Quiet student. Hello? Uh, bonjour? Still no reaction. I reached out and gave him a gentle tap on the shoulder. It's... Whoa! The touch jolted him so... Abruptly, that I retracted my hand and he whirled around and glared at me. Oui, avez-vous besoin de quelque chose? Um, sorry, I, I don't speak French. Uh, non parle non. Oh, anglais, French speaking student. As I missed a Swahili student or Norwegian. He placed his photograph on the top of his square. A loof student now. He's quiet, annoyed, aloof, and French. So in fair, now we actually know more about his couch face than Lissa's, and certainly more than Sherry's and, and Augustine's. Did you need something? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the layers, and I can't tell if this is one. I gently traced the soil and pretended to pinch the air to give an idea of width. Or two, it seems reddish at the top. He grabs his trowel, giving a vibe of a serious, no-nonsense person. Once I shoveled out of the way, he examined the area and indicated, True, this stratum is more red, as you said, but gradually disappears around here. <laughs> he etched a small line to mark the ending. I blinked as I recognised the difference and nodded gratefully. Thanks so much. I mean, I sort of figured it, but I wasn't sure either. It's nice to get a second opinion. I gave him a cheerful smile, but he remained impassive. He even seemed baffled when I reached out to initiate a pop pop handshake. I'm Alyssa. I'm one of uh, the only foreign student here, if it wasn't already obvious by my language skills. <laughs> Reluctantly, he switched the trowel to his left hand and we gave a solid shake before letting go. Kyla. Ah, so now the name appears. And that was it. 
With nothing else to work from his introduction, I decided to bring up his skills. I'm guessing you're aspiring to be an archaeologist. You appear to be know, to know what you're doing. He returned to his side of the square and knelt down, grabbing his photograph. Yes, this is my fourth time here, so I'm acquainted with the subject. And you, especially since you're not from around here? Well... Oh, I'm still beside him. I'm not entirely certain yet. I sort of stumbled into anthropology, and I can't tell if I want to get into archaeology, forensic, or cultural anthropology. I took this field school because I had the feeling that I'd be, just be deciding fact on whether I go physical or cultural. Oh, I see. This, in, this interest seeped through his voice, and I had a feeling any impression he had of me felt like a stone. Well, I know I'll learn a lot from the field school anyway. I don't plan to waste the opportunity. I let out a nervous chuckle. He obviously wasn't convinced, and I dropped the topic. Since we're excavating next to each other, that would make us square mates, or would it be cave mates? Either way, I look forward to working alongside you. He looked confused, but simply gave a mechanical nod. It's very anime, this. Or manga, even. Yeah, sure. Even his last words felt artificial, and I lost him to his little world of micro stratigraphy. I guess he values his concentration. I mentally reminded myself to bring my earbuds for the next time. I had a feeling we wouldn't be making a much small talk outside of excavations. It's the end of my beer. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful. It was mostly a long wait for my photograph to be approved by Sherry. And then I got hit by the jet lag. Despite my worries, Sherry said she wouldn't deduct marks if I napped until dinner. Although she did scold me for getting my journal. I scanned the tables and manoeuvred to where Sherry sat. I scooted to a spot on the bench and silently started my meal. After a few bites, I poked up the pasta dejectedly inside. Now I really wish Paige was here. And we promised to do so many things together too. I glanced up hopefully at Sher Sherry. I felt bad that she was the only oasis in a unfamiliar place and I clung to it. Definitely there, American. Not only that, aside from Kaya, none of the other students greeted me or even tried to converse with me. I guess it was obvious that I didn't attend the same university. Will I fit in? Sorry, this is the end. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> My question was more to myself, but Sherry overheard. Why the students here worried? The students here can be reserved, but I'm sure there'll be a few brave ones who'd like to practice their English with you. They're probably too focused on the lectures and the tasks right now. Oh dear goodness, what have I done? Let's get back to that. There we go. True, I'm sure once we're all used to a routine here. to say this quickly. Save it after my over my last one. Let's return. I ate with gusto feeling confident now. When I finished Sherry glanced at my empty plate. Here I'll take that for you. Try to get some rest. A turn cheered me up and I chided myself for feeling so anxious when I ba had barely arrived. I retreated to my tent and settled down contemplating about tomorrow. A musical tune disrupted the quiet night. It was quickly silenced, but I knew the catchy introduction theme for Mishtara anywhere. It's not a game I know, I don't think. I grabbed my 3DP. No, I didn't leave my system on or anything. Was someone else playing? I might as well play some Mishtara. A little grinding will do me some good. I booted up the game, and the first notes of the theme tune blared loudly. I'd forgotten that my earbuds weren't hooked into the handheld. I sit before him down, hoping that it didn't startle anyone. The low spirits I felt earlier today melted away, and the warm colours of the game. So, so how do we do on our activities? Failed at studying. Succeed, success at studying. Don't 
go on on the third day. I'm joining them. I think actually we'll leave it there. I know I need just save, but we'll save so we don't have to go through that again. And I think we will call it there. So I just like to say, um, well, that was the first instalment in the Let's Play. <laughs> Um, I'm not entirely sure how often I'll be doing this. Maybe once a week, maybe more often, maybe less often. It will kind of depend on my workload, what I'm doing at university and what I'm doing with the blog. Um, but please do let me know any feedback you have. I do apologise for the sound quality. I don't have a great mic at the moment. Um, I do aim on, on, on rectifying that. Um, but if you're interested in, in knowing when I'll release another one, then do hit the uh, uh, subscribe button and please do like the video. Um, I thought before I would go, I'll, I'll actually share a few jokes I've been working on. I know everyone loves my jokes. <laughs> so I went to the National Blacksmithing Museum the other day. But everything was forged. That wasn't as bad as the National Dessert Museum in Eton. What a mess. I do have a funny story of visiting the National Paper Museum. I was walking through one of the galleries, waving a pair of scissors around, and one of the gallery students came up to me and said, Sorry, sorry, excuse me, sir, can you cut that out? So I did. I'm not allowed back. The Postal Museum, though, did get my stamp of approval. I hope those are... Uh, made up for the poorness of the video. Again, I apologise for my terrible uh, voice acting and possibly facial expressions and gestures and basically the entire video, really. Um, I would be, again, really grateful of any feedback if anyone has it. And until then, remember, don't eat each other. Take care.